It's not much of a philosophy, I know. The search for meaning in an otherwise meaningless existence can come in many forms. It could come in religion. It could come as a person trying to live out their life as a non-human. It's fundamentally to do with people trying to find some kind of meaning within their life, trying to find some kind of purpose, some kind of center for their existence. How far they take that depends on their underlying psychological nature, I suppose. Our menstrual blood is the most valuable thing in this whole multiverse. Talking absolute shit again. Most people who believe in some kind of greater truth or some kind of identity or whatever the case may be are fairly harmless. <laughs> They're not going to do you any harm, nor probably do themselves any harm. But I can see why it appeals. The idea of having a special group that accepts you fully because you accept the same fundamental ideas regarding, well, what is acceptably reality? When you trust so many sources and accept so many ideas and there's this grand community of people who agree with you and have been fed the same ideas, you're going to believe what has been told to you. Praise you are fake news. Helps people to lean in a particular direction going from a fuzzy romance with a particular idea, a concept which seems to be potentially interesting, to embracing it wholeheartedly. Back off, devil! Do you think your cancers are gone now? Yes, I believe that, because God never lies. I think the problem with any ideology is you can be easily led astray. When you believe so deeply, believe so strongly, and reality does not fit with your belief, is it any wonder that people rebel, that people turn the other way, that people refuse to accept what is and would prefer to accept what they would prefer to be? I am continuously working on myself. I mean, literally every week. The, yeah. the level of expansion is insane. So if you watch the average person every month or two months, even in the spiritual community, they're mm -hmm. having a kind of revelation that changes their life. For me, it's every day, if not every other day. People find some kind of identity from what they do and how they live often warping what they consider to be real in order to suit their fantastic idea of what truth should be, rather than something which is truly, well, demonstrable. Some ideologies and concept of identity do require some level of evidence or perception of evidence. Not necessarily evidence in the strictest sense, but things you can point to and call evidential. You're back here. After seeing so many demonstrations, so many different techniques, so many different moves, you, you can't help but start believing. I know I have chi energy. You can see it with the half moons. My chi is up now because of the filming. I have half moons in my fingertips now. If meaning for you means proving the supernatural, you'll find it. Then pull the energy in. Pull it down. And push the energy out of the hand. Big breath. More power. More power. Yeah. More passion. More power. Big. Look into the hands. Good. Good. Yes, Magnus, good. Some people like to believe that they're aliens, angels. Other people like to believe they're God's chosen. And some people like to believe that they're somehow some kind of other kin. On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. For the most part, identity and ideology isn't so extreme. It isn't too harmful. It does no real harm to other people. It's about a search for meaning for individuals. In Norway believes she belongs to a different breed. She claims that she is a cat trapped in a human's body. You might say we're all looking for some kind of sense of meaning. And unfortunately, what we consider to be evidential for the claims we make about reality can be easily swayed. And the more out there that you are, psychologically speaking, the more extreme your beliefs could well be. Soon as you see me move, everything you got in there, you push it out. But equally, those more grounded beliefs, those which fit reality to some greater degree, are also more believable by definition. When you have something a little bit more mainstream, and it seems to be supported by news articles, YouTube videos, maybe occasional selective reading of a Wikipedia article, you think that you're an informed individual. How's it working out for you? What a person says they believe or what their justifications are may well differ from what they actually think. Some of it's merely appearance. 
Some of it's merely people projecting ideas. Some of it's them projecting ideas to reinforce their beliefs because they have their doubts. Come with me. That she's an influencer and spiritual teacher who says some of her videos on mental health save lives. It makes it so that suicide can be our safety net or our reset button that's always available to us. Well, it's, it's not much of a philosophy, I know. The problem is when you have no line between what is real and what is not real and no real method of qualifying what is or is not reasonable to accept, practically anything could be accepted as being valid simply because it has been stated. A person who claims to be an expert and fits within your realm of belief is reasonably acceptable to you and people like you. But of course anyone could do that with any number of beliefs. You create a kind of echo chamber a culture of acceptance regarding those ideas. All your messages are sent out into the universe and information in the air is saved. Of everything that you say, every move that you make is recorded in the air. And Magnus and Rebecca, you pre prepare her. That is no way that happened. I just learned that from another video I was listening to. It's a Sith legend. I keep spacing on it. I thought I bought eggs. Cook the man some fucking eggs, bitch! 